Right, well the wind's howling outside, but I'm in the workshop and uh, really excited today because since I started this channel and posted videos in, I think it was February 2018, I've had 100,000 views. And that's, well, completely blown my mind. But more importantly, I've met a lot of new friends along the way and that's been absolutely tremendous and well I thank everybody for staying with me on this channel um, and you know I want to continue producing content which I hope you will enjoy and I'm hoping you're going to enjoy this episode now then I'm going to change things around slightly up till now it's been the bass guitar refit and uh, each episode has been moving on. Now I'm going to carry on with the bass guitar, so that's going to be finished. But I'm also going to int introduce new elements to this uh, show, if you like. Uh, one is the My Guitar feature, which is where I feature one of your guitars. Uh, the other thing is the, the music feature, Our Scoring Challenge. And um, well, we've had an entry to that. And I want to talk about that in this episode. So, Got a lot to get through. Hope you stay with me. Whew. Not sure how we're going to do this. Hello there, I'm Dave and welcome to my workshop. Now, uh, the wind is howling outside. Uh, let's hope it doesn't take the roof off, but that might make for an interesting video. Not one that I'd uh, enjoy making, I'll be honest with you. Anyway, now then. I've been thinking about windsurfing and you might ask what on earth has windsurfing got to do with guitar making? Well I'll tell you. In the last episode I showed you this guitar with the, the neck bolted on and um, I turned it over and it, those sharp amongst you will have spotted that I paused for a few moments like this. Now then, the reason I did was there was a slight discrepancy. Let me show you. Now I hope you can see this. Um, I'm just going to loosen this neck bolt a little bit to demonstrate the problem. And that was when I turned the guitar over, the neck was like that. It wasn't straight. So it angled down this way. And the reason for that is simple. I took away that chunk of the body. Now that was pushing the neck back towards the, the top there. And as soon as I took it away, it, it created um, a cavity that that would move in. Now then I've been thinking about this. And it took me back to my windsurfing days. Yes, that's me, the dot in the distance. But of course, with a windsurf and a, a, and a sailing boat, you have a keel. And it occurred to me that I might be able to fit a keel either to this neck or sort of re a reverse keel to the body that would secure this neck in a very straight position. So, let me show you. Let's, let's turn this over and see if we can have a look at the problem. Let's whip this bolt out. Take that neck off. There we go. Okay, so what I need to do, I think, is to take a strip of wood, something like a piece of oak like this, and mount it just inside there. Probably a bit thinner than this. Um, so it's just a little bit proud of the, of the body. And then to cut a corresponding slot in this neck, so that when I push this in, it's gonna fix that in, in a very straight position. And I think that would give the whole lot a little bit more rigidity. So that's my first job today. Let's find some wood. I found this off cut of sycamore and I've just sanded it down on each side. And it is seven mil 
wide, which I think is going to be okay. So that will then be embedded, I think, in this side of the guitar. And I think it's best to do that uh, rather than having it in the neck because I can just cut a little slot in the neck. So now is the difficult part. I've got to get the alignment absolutely spot on. Okay, so I, I've got the whole neck in alignment with the body. And you can see there is a little bit of a differential there between the body and the neck. And I'm going to have to live with that. So I sort of expected that. Uh, what it means is the wood that I put in inside there needs to pull the neck down this way. So the effect is it's pushed up at the headstock end. Uh, so I've marked center line there. Turn this over. I've also marked a center line just on the end of the neck there. So I know where, where I am and that lines up with the center line of the guitar. So, yeah, let's see if we can draw where this insert should be. I think from looking at this, I've got to make the insert about half a millimeter off center in order to pull the neck straight. So that should be interesting. <laughs> I'm using the, the joint between the two halves of the, the top there as the center line. And I just need to drop that down onto the, the base there and the neck. Should be about there. I think that looks right. Okay. Join those up with a fine pencil line. I'm doing it with a pencil line, but I'm going to actually do it with a knife. Once I'm happy with that line, it looks okay. Well, I've marked the centre line. Now I need to mark a 7mm um, channel so that I can chisel that out to put this insert in. Um, I started late in the day. It is now absolutely throwing it down with rain. It's gone dark, so I'm gonna pack in for the night. Okay, back to work on a quieter day. Now then, I've set these calipers to 3.5 mil uh, because I need a seven mil channel. I'm just gonna see if I can actually just do a mark as a form of measurement. That looks like that worked. Join up the dots. I'm only going for quite a shallow channel. So I'm just going to score it a bit more deeply with this knife. And then take it out with a chisel. I've angled the end of this so it, it shapes into that uh, dovetail sort of angle there. I only want a really thin piece of wood in here. I want it to sort of stick up perhaps 1.5 mil, something like that. Really shallow sort of lip um, just to catch into the neck. So uh, I'm going to mark off the length of this and cut it to length. I think before I cut it to length, I'm just going to cut it to the um, the depth that I want it, and I'm going to cut this to four mil. In fact, it's just a bit over four mil, so I can just um, sand it down to the right size, just with this fine blade. Right, what I've done, I've fitted the block in, I've put a load of pencil lid on the top of it, I've got this neck straight and now I'm just 
working this to try and get the lead to transfer to this neck. Well, I've got a partial mark there which should help me with this. As usual, despite my best efforts to get this absolutely spot on, the, uh, the thing I've just chiselled out isn't in the centre. But um, in a way that doesn't matter as long as this um, is in the right place for the whole lot to line up. Okay, let's do a test fitting. That's not, not quite in there yet. I'm going to use one of these wonderful marker pens that you use for uh, marking through wood if you're going to drill a hole in a wall um, to see if I can just put some green dust on here to uh, to see where it's it's clipping that neck Gee, that should do the job That next straight <coughs> looks like it's uh, flush. Just whip that out a minute. Well, it's just catching along that side, which I think is is the right side actually. Okay, well, it, it's looking pretty straight to me. That's nice, and that is really, really firm now. Yeah. I think that's done the job. Right, I'm going to glue that in. Oh, I'm pleased with how that's worked out. Okay. okay, now it's time for this week's My Guitar Feature. Now this week I'm very grateful to Sean for sending me photos and information about his guitar. And there's a little story that goes with it. So, Sean says, for many years I wanted a BC rich bitch. Now, I have no idea what a BC rich bitch is, but bear with me. He says, I finally got one and I absolutely love that guitar. Now, unfortunately, things in his life didn't go quite right. And at some point, someone took it upon themselves to take out the frustrations with him on his guitar collection. Yes. He says, I almost quit playing. But he decided he would not let them get the better of him. So he spent many years looking for a replacement. He found some on the internet, but there was always an issue with them. Too much money or not the right color. So he says he met a guy through a friend who builds guitars and it got him thinking about building a guitar himself. Now the advice is that start simple and then build up from there but uh, Sean took that advice and um, well he says he threw it out the window because I mean let's be honest Sean wanted a BC rich bitch guitar. 
Now I had to go onto the internet to have a look around to see if I could find some information about a BC rich bitch. And I discovered an article by Premier Guitar Magazine, where I'll put a link to it in the description below. But basically, it all started in the 1950s in Los Angeles when Bernardo Rico and his son Bernie, who was an accomplished flamenco player, um, set up a guitar shop. And I think originally they were building acoustic guitars, getting bodies from Mexico and finishing them and selling them. They built their first electric guitar in 1968 and uh, well basically these guitars were all handmade even the tools that they used were handmade apparently they made the knives that carve the neck and they could carve a neck in sort of 20 minutes I mean it's it's quite impressive when you read all the article they employed a chap called uh, Neil Moser he joined in 1974 and in 1977 he crafted the shape which is now we know as the BC Rich Bitch. It's a fascinating story and I would recommend you have a look at the article because it's got a lot of information and some great photos. But let's get back to Sean's guitar. Now then, you know me, I like looking at the, uh, the spec. So he says, I started with a wood. He used bird's eye maple, purple heart and curly flame maple. And that makes up the neck. He used mahogany for the back side of the wings of the headstock and I believe it's the back of the guitar as well. Uh, the rest of the bird's eye he book matched for the top. He says he purchased two pieces of ebony. Um, he ended up going with the one on the guitar because he liked the grain but the other one has a beautiful grain but it's a little bit bigger so he's hoping that he's going to use that for a bass guitar. Okay so I like looking at some of the woods that have been used because I think it's uh, useful to know that. So let's look at Purple Heart and all the information that I get is from the Woods database. So I'm going to flash these up on the screen if you want to pause them, please do. First one, Purple Heart. I've seen Scott at Bonehead Guitars use Purple Heart and it looks a gorgeous wood, especially when it's used as a sort of a veneer in the body. Um, amazing thing. So workability, it says it can be tricky. Hmm, avoid heating the wood with dull tools or fast machine tools because it gives off a gummy resin. I don't know if that's right or not. I think so it is. Anyway, and it's one of these sensitizers and uh, skin irritants. You know, I just like looking at the, the health aspect of it just to make sure you know what you're dealing with. The other wood, the bird's eye maple. Well, obviously this is, this is maple. Um, this is maple that's, uh, it's a tree that's been under duress and it's tried to form lots of little branches and probably failed. So you get lots of tiny little knots in the, in the wood. Now it's fairly easy to work with, with hand and machine tools. And again, it is a bit of a skin irritant, so you've got to be a bit careful with it, but it is a lovely wood. I've never used it personally, but I've seen some beautiful guitars with it on. And the other is the curly or flamed maple. And, and this is a uh, maple with these sort of beautiful waves in it. And again, it is a form of wave, um, maple. I, I'm, I'm not sure what causes those waves. Um, I'm sure somebody uh, will, will put me right on that. And again, it, because it's maple, it's fairly easy to work. And, and again, obviously you've got to be careful with it. The, the final one is the, the ebony. Now, obviously, Ebony is one of those endangered species, so there's not a lot around. And, you know, if you can look for alternatives, then, you know, I think it's probably a good idea to do. Um, Sean said he got a couple of pieces, so he's got another piece that he wants to use for a bass guitar. So, but he said it's got some beautiful figuring in it, and I can well imagine that. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, it is very dense and it does blunt tools. I do, I do know that is the case. Anyway, so without further ado, let's go on to some of these photos. Woo! Now, okay, you can see that that is not a shape that you would, uh, yeah, start off with necessarily. I think, Sean, you, you definitely dived in the deep end with that shape. But it is, it is marvellous. Uh, I love the through the neck you've got there. And I can see how you've used the purple heart and it, it really does look absolutely fantastic. 
that's that's amazing. Sean's idea was to incorporate as many things about the guitars he lost into this one. And one of those things was a floating trim system, which I think he, he wants to put into this guitar. Wow, well that's a nice neck. And again, I just say, this purple heart, I, you know, it really does work. I know I've seen Scott use it and, and other people use it in the Great Guitar Build-Off. I could have to get hold of some of this purple heart because that looks really brilliant when it's uh, put together like that. But I mean, what a, what a neck to start on if you're just starting out. Wow. Things that went wrong. Well, after a very unfortunate accident with the router, he had to change the headstock design. He says the one that you see is not the original one he intended having. Uh, but his luthier teacher friend wouldn't let him give up. Again, I think you're doing exactly the right thing, Sean, by getting a, an expert to help you with this build. He said, we made some adjustments and the headstock ended up as we see it now. I mean, again, I mean, you wouldn't know, would you? He also had some problems with the router when he was shaping the neck profile. Now, whew, I have never tried shaping a neck with a router. I know people do that, but uh, yeah, no, I've never done that. I like the angle grinder. <laughs> you could say that's probably just as bad, but there we go. But he says all the mistakes have been changed and the thing has been fixed. Oh, and I see he started to put the frets in as well. Now that body top, again, it, with the, the bird's eye maple, that looks, that looks absolutely tremendous, you know. Now the thing about this is that these are the three pictures that Sean sent me because this guitar is still in production. And I've said to Sean, right, I'm going to show it this in this episode but once he finishes this guitar I hope you agree with me we want to see this finished guitar because that looks pretty amazing anyway wow excellent stuff thank you very much Sean we're going to look forward to seeing the next part of this build and hopefully uh, perhaps even hear you play it well Let's see. Anyway, thanks very much. Well, I found Sean's determination very inspiring and I'm really looking forward to seeing the finished guitar. For me, guitar building has always been something that uh, I can do to drift away from uh, other things that go on in life. And I know uh, a lot of the other builders sort of treat this as a very cathartic process and uh, well, keeps me going, I tell you. Right, and I think I'm going to have to keep going on to get this fretboard, or these frets dressed, should I say. Now, before I do that, there's a couple of things I need to do. One thing is to use my fretboard level tester, and um, I've, I'll put a link to the video where I made this. A very simple device, it's got three bolts, in a piece of wood uh, and what I do to start off with is just make sure that it's level using my straight edge so I'm just going to adjust this center screw slightly I shouldn't hear a tap when it's flat nearly there That's good. Okay, now I can test the fretboard. And I do that just by placing it on very carefully, trying not to damage the fretboard. And we can see that there's a little bit of back bow in that. Now it's very slight. And I'm just, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm thinking that's probably flat enough yeah gosh that is really 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 slight let me just have a look see what we've got here oh, we're talking about half a millimeter if that well there, there is another thing that I've got to do before I dress these frets and that's get access 
to the truss rod. I mean, I normally expect a little bit of back bow because, you know, banging in those frets is bound to push the neck backwards. Um, this is obviously very hard wood. I've got oak and, uh, well, walnut on the top there, so it's not giving very much. Um, another wood might give a little bit more. Anyway, whatever happens, I do need to be able to access that truss rod, and uh, so I need to chisel out a bit of that. Um, whatever it's called, olive, yes. Okay, I'll just get the neck clamped into this neck vise. It's nice and solid. Uh, let's find something to uh, chisel that out. Well, the good news is I can get a, uh, an Allen key in there and the truss rod moves. Now, of course, this is a single action truss rod. And so even if I wanted to get rid of the back bow, I couldn't do it with this truss rod. Now, I know some folks said at the beginning I should have put a dual action truss rod in there, but the, the, the truss rod that was in there was OK and I didn't want to waste it, to be honest with you. But this raises an interesting point. And that is, I've got a little bit of back bow on the neck, but I'm gonna to have to now dress these frets and level them. Now I've been thinking about this. If I try and level the frets as they are with a, a, a leveling beam, what I'm gonna end up doing is taking more off the middle than I am off the ends, which of course is gonna give me problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a very light leveling um, with a shorter leveling beam to try and get that curve. Well, keep the curve. So I'm going to have to be very careful how I do it. Now, I, I have seen um, a video where a, a guitar maker actually uses a truss rod that he adjusts to the curvature of the neck and puts sandpaper on. Uh, the back of the truss rod um, and then uses that to level the frets. Now unfortunately I don't have a long enough truss rod to do that so um, I'm just going to try my technique. So it's a short leveling beam and just be careful when I do it just to make sure that I don't take too much off. Okay then I'm ready to start uh, dealing with these uh, frets. Now then here's uh, my uh, a little look collection of tools for that. I've got various files. Um, a lot of them have got at least one edge uh, ground down so it's smooth so it doesn't damage the fretboard uh, and they're different grades. Um, I've got this uh, little file which is stuck to the bottom of a piece of wood uh, which I use just to, to take the edges off the, uh, the frets there. I've got uh, some uh, wet and dry paper stuck to these uh, leveling beams. Uh, different grades, uh, so we'll go from 180 to 600 and I've got various bits of wet and dry stuck onto these rubber pads which I'll use just to polish the whole lot up at the end. So to start with I'm going to take the edges off these frets. Now little admission here, I've already done one side and I've already talked you through it except I hadn't got the microphone switched on, so um, here's take two. So basically, I'm just gonna rub this file gently down the frets until I start to hear the wood come through or, or stop hearing the metal. So here we go. Starting to get easier now. Right, that feels good. So what I'm going to do now is switch to some 180 grit on this leveling beam. Uh, 
And finally, some 320. Now that's given a little bit of an angle to the edge of the fret there, but you can see it's created some burrs. So the next step is to take those burrs off. And uh, to do that, I think I'm going to use this, this sm small file I've got here with a, a flat edge. I'm just going to very carefully try and round the corner. I don't want to damage the fretboard in any way. Only trying to just remove those burrs, so shouldn't take too much. Okay, now it's time to tape up the fretboard. There's a bit of a trick here. And uh, that is, before you do anything, put a couple of pieces of tape down the side of the neck on each side. Like so. Oops, just lost my neck block. Okay. Now I can go ahead and tape up. And when I come to take all the tape off. All I need to do is peel the two sides off and hopefully the whole lot will lift up. Well, that's the theory. Today I'm using Ben Crow's technique of folding the tape rather than trying to uh, cut it all. See how it works. Looks like it's going to work. You see? I've just had a cup of tea. Do you know what, today I really am losing it. The number of times where I've put the camera on and turned the microphone off for some reason or forgotten to turn it on. Well, it's too numerous to count today. So uh, I'm having to piece together, well, I will have to piece together all the video bits that I've got voice over on. Anyway, so uh, before I went out and had a cup of tea, I put some blue marker on this. And so this will be nice and dry now. So I'm gonna, uh, run a leveling beam over this but before I do that I may have mentioned the little musical challenge that I've got going on at the moment called R Scoring Challenge 2022. Now the idea is that I'm asking you if you play guitar, drums, piano, trombone, whatever to have a go at composing a piece of music to a short film that I've put out there. Now then Last week, I was delighted to see that somebody had posted their entry to this challenge. Now, it's not a competition, there's no prizes, so it's just a challenge. But one of the things that I think is really important is to try and get as many people as possible to go and look at all these entries and to give comments, you know, positive comments or constructive criticism, or just ask questions. But I, I do feel that's, you know, if you're producing a piece of music, the one thing you want is for people to listen to it. And this piece of music is a real cracker. I'm telling you that now. It's from Sonical Mods. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a link just up there. And I would be really grateful if you would like pause this video now and go off and have a look at this video. I mean, it's only about a minute and a half long, so you're not going to be away too long, but um, it'd be fantastic if you could go and listen to it. And as I say, leave a comment. Anyway, I'm going to let you do that. And in the meantime, I'm going to get ready to level this fretboard. I really love the rhythm that uh, he's got going there in that piece of music. Um, the bass, the percussion, and the soaring guitar at the end. 
magic. Excellent work. Okay, here we go. This is a 320 grit. I'm just going really lightly over the top. Now you can see here, I've got a fret where I've not taken anything off. Well, I've taken a little bit off there, not a lot though. So that one is obviously a bit lower. So I'm gonna to have to go over those a little bit more. All the rest of the frets are not too bad, if I'm honest. I'm going to sh sort of slope these off a little bit more anyway, so that looks pretty reasonable. I think I'll just have a go with the fret rocker now, just to see how it's looking. That's a high spot. Right, apart from the second fret in down at the other end there most of the others are okay what I'm going to do now is just use this little device which has got 320 on uh, put a bit of cardboard on the fret there uh, around the 12th fret and my, I just want to taper off these end ones I mark them up again and then just do the crowning on the top Okay, so the aim of the game here is to basically chamfer the sides of the each fret so that we're left with a very small ridge of colour along the top because we just want a very small ridge touching the string. I use this file, it's got a flat edge and um, it's quite fine. And I just sort of turn it towards the top as I go. And I'm going to clamp this neck in more securely. So, you know, I think I'm going to have to make myself some wooden handles for these bolts, you know. It makes it easier to tighten them up then. I find you get into a rhythm with this and sometimes it's easier just to go and do all of the frets in one direction first and then turn the neck round and do them in the other direction. So I've crowned all those frets and now I'm going to use some of these pads with wet and dry on just to polish them up a bit. And uh, what have we got here? We've got 600, 600 grit. Oh, do you know what? This really isn't holding in, is it? Tell you what I'm gonna do. Go back to the neck holders. Right, 600. And um, it's a bit of 1200 grit. Finally, I'm going to give them a bit of a polish with the uh, with the Dremel. Here we go. Put that in there. Got some paste on the uh, the wheel, which is probably going to spray off. Let's. Uh... Well, if all's gone to plan, we should end up with a nice, shiny fretboard. Well, it all came off. Whether it was any easier or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> now then. I've tidied up the workshop 
just like they do on those cooking programs where they uh, finish all their dishes and then the judges taste it and everything is packed away and you've got to think those dinners must be stone cold anyway that's by the by I've got the frets in and they're shining nice and brightly I don't know if you can see that I've got my little what I called a keel in I'm just so to keep the neck as dead straight as I possibly can so I think I'm going to call it a day for this video and well I want to thank Sean for sending me his uh, photographs and the story of his guitar and uh, Sonical Mods for uploading that marvellous uh, composition for our scoring challenge 2022 please have a go at that and also if you've got a guitar story you'd like me to feature on the, uh, the series just send me some details the uh, contact form is on my web page and the link is in the description below I've got some great guitars coming up so uh, stay tuned and hopefully we're going to have some more entries to that uh, challenge well well I really appreciate your comments thank you very much for watching don't forget to hit subscribe stay safe and I'll see you soon